guys, it's your girl from Philly. Welcome to another episode of Handcrafted Wines, where we make great wine at home the fun and easy way. Before we get started, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. And to celebrate, we're going to be trying a brand new recipe. I've never made this before, but I got the idea. I was inspired by watching Happy Homesteading and they had made a chocolate wine. So I said, hmm, what goes great on Valentine's Day but chocolate? But I wanted to try something new. So today we're going to be making a chocolate covered cherry wine. I'm starting off with four ounces of Hershey's cocoa powder. Of course, I'm from Pennsylvania, so of course I had to get Hershey's chocolate. Um, I use half of this container. This is an eight ounce container, and I'll be using half today. If I need to add more during the secondary fermentation, I'll add more to give more chocolate flavor if it's necessary. And we also have three pounds of frozen sweet cherries. We have two and a half cups of white sugar and our usual players our acid blend our pectic enzyme to break down the fruit walls of the cherries our dynamic duo which is our yeast nutrient and our yeast energizer and even though chocolate has some just to be safe and because this is a new recipe for me i'm also adding powdered tannin Oh, and our yeast is going to be Red Star Premier Classique. Okay, let's get started. The first thing that I want to do is to dissolve the sugar and the cocoa powder together with some hot water. And I just want to make a note that when you use cocoa powder, you want to make sure you're not using baking cocoa powder. You want to use the regular cocoa powder that we would use to make hot chocolate with. And there's other great brands out there. There's Godiva, there's Ghirardelli. There's so many different chocolates that you can work with. Of course, I'm gonna choose Hershey's. So I'm adding some hot water to our primary fermenter. And in it, I'm gonna add the sugar first. I'll add two cups and reserve a half a cup in case we need it. That was rhymes on the money. And now we're going to add our cocoa powder. I'm going to spoon it out just so I don't make a mess. And the reason I'm taking this step is because just like our tannin, cocoa powder has a tendency to um, be difficult dissolving in liquids. Sugar helps to make it dissolve faster and the heat should help it as well. Now what I'm hoping to achieve is a light chocolate taste a cherry wine with a light chocolate taste to it i don't want anything that's overpowering which is why i didn't use the full eight ounces to begin with let's get that in there but again this is an experiment so this is my first time trying it we'll see what happens now i did look at a lot of recipes and they use different variations they use cocoa nibs they use the actual fruit of the um, of cocoa, of the cacao pod. There's a fruit that's around the bean. So I've seen a lot of different variations of adding chocolate to your wine. The most important thing is that we don't add any chocolate that has fat in it. Fat, of course, would um, cause pockets of growth and you would risk things like botulism in your batch. So 
it's incorporating really well right now. Giving it a little extra air is not going to hurt anything either. Grab a paper towel for this lion. I don't want to make a mess. Add a little cream to this, and we have hot hot chocolate. Okay. Now I'm going to add our straining bag. Oh, it smells so good. Chocolate cover anything is delicious. And I couldn't decide if I wanted to do chocolate with strawberries, chocolate with blood oranges, chocolate with cherries. And I said, chocolate covered cherry sounds amazing. So now we're going to spoon in our cherries. Oh, they've defrosted all the way and they're so juicy. Then I was a little concerned too because sweet cherries actually have a much milder taste than tart cherries. Tart cherries usually give you that pow cherry taste. But we'll see what, how it turns out. One thing about making wine at home is you can always try new things. Now I did, I did um, see on Happy Homestead that wines that are made with chocolate are bitter in the first year and better in the second year. So this may be a wine that we let age a couple of years before we actually fully enjoy it. Of course, we'll be tasting it in about three months just to see where it is and about six months to see where it is, but we won't be fully imbibbing on our chocolate covered cherry wine yet. So the combination of colors is giving me like black forest cake feel. I see the deep chocolate there, but I also see that deep burgundy of the, um, the cherries. And I, I am going to blitz my cherries, but they are pretty much broken down from the freezing process. So with the pectic enzyme being added to the batch, I can see all of the cherry flesh being used up. What are your plans for Valentine's Day? Mine obviously is making wine. Do you spend it in? Do you spend it out? Do you spend Valentine's Day with friends, with that special person? I know there's been a movement to have a Galentine's Day, um, which I think is so much fun. Wow. So we're, we're just maybe halfway there. Not quite. I'm really interested to see what this is going to taste like. I'm hoping it has like the qualities of a full body red wine with lots of tannin. And I, I really can't imagine this as a sweet wine. I, I would see it more as either semi-sweet or dry actually. Taking on maybe some port qualities to it. Oop, I don't want to get juice everywhere. It's a really juicy. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to add a little bit more water and just try blitzing our cherries a bit.
That's a good level. That water wasn't actually hot. It was kind of, um, it was warm, but I had, um, I had turned it off quite a while ago. So I'm going to try to get down into the bag, into the center of the cherries before I turn the immersion blender on. And just that fast. Yeah, it broke down our cherries that quickly. Look at that. Like you can see. They're like mush. I'm really hoping this is a good combo. If if it needs a little more kick to it, or, you know, a little more brightness, I may add the peel of an orange in secondary fermentation. Not the juice, but just maybe the peel. I wouldn't want to add lemon because that's completely going against the, the idea of the flavor profile. Okay, now we're going to add our usual players. Let's close this up. I'm going to pull this out so you can see. Like it's, it's really like just soupy at this point. There's not a lot of solid cherry in there at all. Yeah, this goes all the way down to the bottom. This could easily make a mess. Okay, so we're starting with our acid blend. Our pectic enzyme. Our dynamic duo, which is our yeast nutrient and our yeast energizer. And finally, hmm, I'm going to dissolve our tannin in some water. Now, chocolate naturally has tannin, but this is the type of wine that I think would really benefit from having loads and loads of tannin in it. If you ever smell powdered tannin, it just smells like um, very, very concentrated black tea, which is probably exactly what it is. It also has a little smokiness. It, it smells like tea. It also has the aroma of um, prunes and it smells a little smoky, kind of like wood chips. All of that sounds amazing. Okay, I'm gonna stir that up really good. Top it off with some more water before we check our specific gravity. Oh my gosh, I can imagine how um, messy it's gonna make my turkey baster and my hydrometer and my, my um, beaker. It's a really, really rich chocolate color. Okay, we used all of that. I don't know if you guys can see that, like how dark and chocolatey it looks. I've seen the, coca the cacao nibs at it. And I'm wondering like how much chocolate flavor that actually imparts when they add cacao nibs. All right. Now to see where we're starting and if we need more sugar. <laughs> so dark. Hmm. 
who knows if this comes out good this might be something i'll do every year i've got high expectations a little bit more we're almost there i hope this doesn't make it hard to read the hydrometer because it's so opaque all right that's great What our reading is. It's midway in the red section, which let me see what that means. Oh, I gotta grab that paper towel. It actually coated the um, hydrometer quite a bit. So according to my hydrometer, we're currently at about 12% ABV. And let me get the actual reading. We're at 1.080. I'm going to add the last half cup of sugar just for good measure. Again, this is an experiment. I, I don't really know what to expect. I'm pretty sure as it ferments though, a lot of this, this chocolate richness, this chocolate thickness, it's going to settle down with the leaves at the bottom. I expect it to be a lot thinner than what I see right now. Okay, that's our final half cup. Oh my heavens, can you imagine if this blew out? Oh, there'd be chocolate everywhere. I think I'm going to keep um, this inside of a bucket just to be sure. Because again, I, I don't know what to expect. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I am noticing is what I always assumed in like a chocolate milky beverage that that richness came from the milk. It, it, it appears to come from the chocolate. This batch has a really silky uh, texture to it. Okay, I don't feel any more sugar crystals at the bottom of the vessel. I'm gonna do one more hydrometer reading and I'm pretty much satisfied where we are. I just wanna get an idea. And honestly, I started to add the entire eight ounces. I'm glad I didn't. Because as viscous as this is right now, I can, I can just imagine what it would have been if I had added eight ounces of chocolate and it probably would have gone to waste. It probably just would have settled to the bottom and become part of the leaves. That's what makes this hobby so much fun. You can make wine out of anything. You just have to think about it. All right, one more test. Oh, okay. So it bobbled its way down to the very base of the red line, which is looking like 15, 15% ABV. And our number, it's a little beyond one point zero nine zero so i'm going to say it's about one point zero nine two i'll record that so that um i don't forget and i'll do the math and see what where that'll get us but i'm thinking probably more than any it would be about 
15, 15% ABV, 15, 16%. I wager 16%. I have high hopes. And the last step is to add our yeast. I'm really curious to see how our yeast responds to this mixture. Spreading out really quickly. Oh, adding yeast changes the scent all together and it actually isn't bad. It kind of smells like uh, chocolate and bread right now. <laughs> or chocolate bread. That's amazing. Okay, and as always, yeah, I got all the yeast off. As always, I'm going to be stirring for the first seven days. I'm probably going to sample this in the first seven days just to get an idea of what, what we've created, you know, where it's going. And then, of course, I'll sample it again in 14 or 15 days. Um, and that's when we'll do our initial racking. But this entire experiment is brand new for me. So we get to have a first together on Valentine's Day. Isn't that romantic? <laughs> okay, we added our lid with our grommet. Now we're going to fill our airlock with some star sand to the maximum fill line. I feel like a mad scientist. I have no idea where we're going with this. But hopefully it's good. Okay, the yeast is responding to it yet well. They're moving about and they're separating. Because that was my other concern, whether or not it would be too thick for the yeast to be able to take on. But they seem to be doing okay. I'll check it again tomorrow when it's time to stir it. All right, so we have our chocolate covered cherry batch ready to go. This is so interesting looking. And this is our first Valentine's Day together. So this was our chocolate cherry date. I want to thank you again for spending this time from, with me. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, purchase your own equipment, and make your own wine so we can have fun together.